Well, I'm happy to say that I've made some significant progress since my last video. Um, it's been a little over a week, and here you can see I'm working on the um, rudder assembly, working on the trailing edge, used some advice that I got from my technical advisor, and then also some advice I got off of, of the forums. I ultimately ended up using the double-sided tape method, and I'm pretty happy with the results. As you can see, I'm using the pneumatic squeezer to place the rivets. I set them partially, and then I ended up setting them fully. I also went through and did all of the rivets in a random pattern to try to avoid any of the waviness, and I got a very straight um, trailing edge. I've heard that um, you should definitely do this with back riveting, but I got such nice results using the flat squeezer set from Cleveland Tools and the pneumatic squeezer that I'm going to plan to use the same technique for the rest. Here I went along with the technique I saw on Jason Ellis' videos and used the PVC pipe cleat code to the leading edge skins to roll the leading edges. And it took some work, but I ultimately ended up with some pretty consistent curves, and I was pretty happy with the results with that one, too. This actually required a good bit of force, and my forearms were pretty tired at the end of the day after turning all of these edges. So, working on the front spar, getting the spar tops attached as well. Doing all of the match drilling right now for the flange ends. My friend Casey came over to help me do some of the assembly on the horizontal stabilizer. And so I'm coming along nicely on the horizontal stabilizer. My friend Casey came over today and helped get everything put together. It's by far the largest piece that we've seen. Um, kind of ran out of Clecos during the process. The um, holes are all final drilled. I just need a number 30 right angle drill to drill 16 holes here and then I'll be able to disassemble everything and put everything back together again. All right, so I was able to borrow a right angle bit um, from someone on the forums, um, which was incredibly generous. And it's so nice that there's so many people out there willing to help. I've been really um, impressed with the community. So I'm going to get these holes drilled so I can start taking everything apart. Alright, so the countersinking is complete. Um, I didn't have my time lapse going because my other battery was dead. Um, I think there's approximately 300 countersinks in the spars and the stiffeners. Um, my hand's a little tired from that. Um, a little ashamed to say. And now it's going to do some dimpling, then some priming, and then some riveting.
So I find it slightly amusing that you go through this whole page of work and then you get to step seven and step eight. It just, it just says dimple the skins and rib flanges and machine countersink. Well, that was about three days of intermittent work to get those two steps done. And here I'm prepping the skins and some of the internal parts for priming. And whenever possible, I try to do this outside just to um, avoid the fumes. I'm using a P100 mask. And here you can see me assembling the horizontal stabilizer and finally putting in some rivets. This was by far the largest number of rivets and the rivets on the leading edge ribs were pretty difficult. I screwed up a few of them and had to um, put a larger size rivet in to make the hole fit because after drilling them out it was too big of a hole for the size 3 rivets. I got some help along the way from my nephew Nicholas in this video. A couple of my other nephews have helped as well, as, long, as well as my sons. And you can see here that I let everyone who helped on this individual part sign the spar.